Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, <clears throat> and miscellaneous odds and ends. <clears throat> As you can tell, I'm still under the weather. I'm not out walking around today. It's kind of cold and yucky out. Um, I do have a roast in the oven behind me, and I'll show you the results of that at the very end of the video. Um, because I'm trying to cook it from completely frozen right out of the freezer into the oven. So we'll see how it comes out. I uh, wasn't sure I was going to try and eat today because I had a, another rough night last night of just sitting around um, being ill. But I fell asleep again about 5.30 this morning and didn't wake up till almost noon. And I felt much, much better after that. So. We'll see how it goes, but today <clears throat> I want to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, I want to talk about how never to stall on your diet. And it doesn't come from exercise, it doesn't come from the food you're eating. Yes, all of those are important, but the primary thing that keeps you from never stalling on your diet is the primary principle behind Be 1% Better today that my channel is based on. And it all comes from right up here. It's your mindset. You know, the first thing you have to think about is the scale. Are you using the scale once or twice a month just to kind of keep yourself on track and where you are or are you using that as a gauge of your success because if you're using the scale as a gauge of your success you're setting yourself up for failure because it's your weight loss is not going to continue in a straight down pattern it's going to have dips and valleys it will over time trend downwards but <clears throat> It's not a 100% thing. But if we're using the scale as a measure of our success, we're setting ourselves up for failure. And that can have really bad psychological effects on us. Um, <clears throat> the scale is not your friend in most situations. Because um, look at me, I was just looking through some old videos of mine, titles and things, and you know, I realized that my, my hundred, my uh, six month video, I was down 115 pounds. I think that's what it was. it was. I think it was 115 pounds, which means in the last three months, I've only lost 20 pounds. And if you look at that in relation to everything else that I've done over the course of the nine months, that's not a whole lot of weight loss. Um, <clears throat> but the way to think of it <clears throat> is not, I've only lost, what did I say, 20 pounds in three months. You have to think of it as, I lost 20 pounds in three months. Don't let the scale be your enemy. You know, if you want to scale once or twice a month to see where you're at, that's okay as long as you're able to put it in its proper place. It's just one of the tools and one of the measuring devices on how you're doing. The biggest thing I like to think about is how do I feel? Now, obviously the last few days I haven't felt great because I've been sick, but overall, I feel so much better than I did nine months ago. Um, it's just truly amazing how much better I feel, how much more I'm able to do, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so you want to make sure, sorry about this, guys. <clears throat> and now you can see why I'm not out walking in the cold damp today, because uh, I'm hoping to be better, even better tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to eat today. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit here, but... I wasn't sure if I was going to eat today because I wasn't super hungry this morning, but then when I woke up, I still wasn't super hungry, but I started watching a little bit of YouTube videos, and 
a Subway commercial came on. It's like, mm, that looks really good. I don't even really like Subway that much. Um, then a Papa John's commercial came on. I'm like, oh yeah, that's my jam. So I suddenly realized that these commercials are having an effect on me. I must be getting hungry. And, you know, it is Saturday afternoon, and I haven't eaten since Wednesday afternoon. So that's, that's a bit of a fast. I am hungry. So uh, we'll see. And no, I, had, did, I did not step on the scale this morning to see how much weight I'd lost in the three and a half days I've been sick. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, three days plus, you know, a little bit here. Because I was starting to feel a little odd when I ate my meal on Friday, on Wednesday, and I think that was, I don't even really remember, but I want to say it was early on Wednesday, um, <clears throat> because we had church Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We didn't have church Wednesday this week, so I got in here and cooked about three or four in the afternoon, which is significantly earlier than I usually cook. But, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, the scale is not your friend, folks, but on with the main topic today, how to never stall. It comes, goes back to the be 1% better today. You do not have to do it on strictly your gravity exerted on the scale. Um, <clears throat> as Dr. Barry and many other people suggest, take your measurements. You know, I don't do a whole lot of it. I measure around my neck. I measure around my waist. And I measure around my thighs. And that just gives me a general idea of how much I'm shrinking. And I don't even really have to do that much measuring because <clears throat> I know when I first got down here um, in the fall, I ordered a new set of church clothes and I got size 42 pants. And I was originally wearing a size, when I was here last year, I was wearing size 58. Um, but I ordered a size 42 based on some other clothes that I had kind of just judging it and said 42 is probably going to be about right. And they were a hair snug, but they didn't stay a hair snug for very long. And the most recent two pair of pants that I've ordered um, have been size 38. So I'm now officially down from 58 to 38. And the 38s are not snug. They're I still have to wear a belt with the 38s. Um, I've got one pair of 40s in the intermediate and the 40s I can pull up without unbuttoning them. So they're a little on the large size. The 48s I have to actually unbutton to get them up over my big fat rear end. But, uh, <clears throat> but we're moving in the right direction. But how to not stall. Besides the weight loss, your gravity exerted on the scale and how you feel and what your measurements are. Remember, there are so many other things you can improve on to <clears throat> always be making progress. Remember, we've talked about this many, many times. Um, whether you are reading your Bible or some other book, do a little bit better that day. Read a little bit more. If you're trying to learn a new skill, practice that skill, work on that skill, watch another YouTube video, or go to one of the sites that I belong to is called Skillshare, not sponsored by the way, although if anybody is affiliated with Skillshare watching this, I'm happy to talk to you because it's a great site. It's not very expensive and there are literally thousands of subjects that you can do <clears throat> courses on. You know, I've taken courses there on photography and videography and how to make thumbnails, how to use Photoshop and how to use Premiere Pro and all of the other Adobe things that I have access to um, or crocheting or whatever it is that you're into, knitting, um, how to cook over an open fire, what, you know, whatever it is you're interested in, you'll probably find a course or two there talking about what you want to learn. So learn a little bit more about what you were trying to do. Um, put a puzzle together or work on a puzzle. Just do 1% more of the puzzle. Um, whatever it is you're trying to do, whether it be in weight loss or in life, 
you know, like me, I'm working on hiking, so I've been studying a lot of hiking gear, what I'm going to need to buy first. Um, <clears throat> you know, what kind of things I can expect, what I need to be able to do, not to just hike, because I've just been hiking for now, but when I actually go backpacking and I'm planning on spending the night, one of the things I'm working on is trying to get up and down off the ground because you can't very well sleep in a tent if you can't get up and down off the ground. Um, <clears throat> but just continue to push forward on whatever else it is you're working on in life. And if losing weight is the only thing you're working on in life, you need to find some other hobbies because there's so much more out there whether it be travel or looking at things around your city or wherever it is you happen to be. It's amazing how much, even in this cold, wet, rainy of North Carolina, that I can find to get out and go look at. Um, there's plenty of things for you to do. And if you're pushing forward, not with just your diet and exercise program, you will continue to move forward. You'll be 1% better today than you were yesterday. And you can count that among your successes or your non-scale victories, because there are non-scale victories to be had every day. And then if you have a non-scale victory every day, even if it's just, well, and I'm using the Bible as my example, because that's one of the things I've been working on is reading more of my Bible every day. Um, <clears throat> you know, if I normally read a chapter, if I push through and learn to read just a little bit more than a chapter, then I can either look at that as an improvement or a jump start on the next days or however you want to look at it, I have been 1% better. Um, Obviously, with his illness, I am 1% better today. Actually, I'm probably about 20% better today than I was yesterday. But there are so many different ways to look at it. So don't get in your own head. I guess that's the main, the main message today is don't set yourself up for failure. Don't think of, oh, how do I want to say this? Don't think of diet and exercise as your only avenues to judge your success. Um, <clears throat> because there are going to be days where you can't walk any further. And that's okay. You still manage to walk, which is more than what you did before you started walking. You may not have lost weight today, but you continued to eat right, and maybe your body, body needs to take a pause to do some healing. Everybody's different. So just always keep that in mind that you, you just want to make sure that you're not getting in your own way and that you don't psych yourself out to set yourself up for failure because there are so many successes to be had out there. Sorry, this video was kind of all over the place today, guys. Um, speaking of exercise, though, which I talked about, I don't even remember what video it was in. I think it was in the one that came out on Saturday. It's going to come out today. I just don't know. I don't remember. I'm still a little foggy from, from being ill. But uh, <clears throat> on the exercise front, I did manage to do my exercises today. I did push up slash planks on the counter here. Um, <clears throat> and I did some, I did my sit ups. I turned the chair sideways so the back is off to my side and I tucked my toes underneath the counter to keep me from flipping backwards off the chair because my core is not strong enough yet to hold myself up all the way. Um, it's getting there though. I mean, I can, I can feel that there's improvement. I've gone a little further with both the planks and the, the sit-ups. I'm going to save the squats for tomorrow because those were alternating days until I missed two days because I was sick and just didn't feel like doing anything. But, uh, yeah, just, don't don't get in your own head. Don't make uh, you know. Don't make things harder on yourself. Don't you know say, oh, I have to lose a pound this week, or I'm not doing it right. No, just <clears throat> your 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 
gravity exerted on the scale is going to fluctuate. I mean, as Professor Kay always says, if you, all you're really interested in is the number on the scale, you could go have an arm amputated and that will lighten your load on the scale quite a bit. But is that advantageous? Is that something we really want to do? Of course not. No, and you know, I can see y'all jump into the comments now. Oh, Bob said we should just go cut our arms off so that we don't weigh as much. I didn't say that at all, folks, and you know that I didn't say that at all. But just keep up with what you're doing, hang in there, stick around for just a couple of minutes. Although, with the magic of editing, it'll be like I was never gone. I'll show you the results and explain to you how I cooked my completely frozen. Roast. And here we are, folks. As you can see, I got it a little bit overdone. Um, <clears throat> I guess I should have turned down the oven just a little bit. But I'd never cooked one from completely frozen, but I'm sure it's going to be fine because that's what I have cooked now. So I'm going to eat it regardless. <clears throat> I wrapped it up in aluminum foil and did it for two hours on 350 instead of two hours on 300. And I guess I should have left it at 300 even though it was frozen. But uh, I still stuck it under the broiler to get a nice crispy crunch on the outside of it. Um, because I didn't get a chance to salt it while it was frozen because salt doesn't really stick to frozen beef. You see I have a pretty nice crust of salt on the top of it. So that is what my roast ended up looking like today. It's not fabulous, but I'm going to eat a bite or two of it and then let it sit for another 15 or 20 minutes because I haven't eaten since Wednesday. And then I'm going to dig into the rest of this. Don't forget to get out there. Be 1% better today, folks. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.